Those would be sad words for God to have to say, you were everything but mine. Thank you. Stand with me for the word of God in the book of Psalm. Psalm 116, verse 7 and 8. Then we're going to do some uh, expository preaching through the, some of the verses in that chapter as the Lord revealed. As a, God gave a, a natural three-point outline that's so wonderful right here in verse 8. And verse 8 is for the text is going to be taken from <laughs> return unto thy rest O my soul for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee for thou hast delivered my soul from death mine eyes from tears and my feet from falling Here's your three points. First of all, he's delivered my soul from death. Amen. He's delivered my eyes from tears and my feet from falling. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the beautiful music and thank you for the power of your word and for your presence and for the presence of your people. And Lord, we'll never be assembled again exactly the way we are today the sermon would certainly never be the same we thank you for your freshness for your providential will knowing everyone who is present today to hear the word of god and what the needs of every individual are and speaking to a preacher who doesn't have a clue about any of the needs that's resting in the burdens of the hearts that's assembled. Oh God, use your word in these lips of clay to give your message today. Nothing more, nothing less. And we thank you for the power of your word. Bless everything that's said and done now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. sermon today is special delivery. Amen. How many of you like special deliveries? <laughs> amen? You would think something special is in them, amen, if they're special deliveries. It would be sad to have a special delivery and to have telemarketer coupons inside. <laughs> today, I'm preaching about the one that has very special deliveries. Amen. Our Lord delivers. Yes, sir. Last week I preached about no other gods can deliver. Right. When Elijah was faced with 850 false prophets, 450 of them from the worshippers of Baal, and 400 of them that sat at Jezebel's table that fought against God and how they put the sacrifices upon the altar to see whose God delivered. And we saw how the enemies they had, uh, those that called upon Baal, had no delivery whatsoever. No fire could come, no power could come because they were all dead. They're still in the grave, by the way. They had no power to deliver. But when Elijah called on the God in heaven, O Lord, hear. Let these people know that thou art God, and I am your prophet. And so he said, Lord, send the fire from heaven, and God sent the fire to consume the sacrifice. Right. Lick up all the water that they poured upon it, and the, and the trench filled full of water. They lacked it all up. God delivered. God is always delivering. That's right. He delivered me Amen. from death, hell, and the grave. He delivered you who are saved from the same things. Aren't you glad that there's no partiality with God? Amen. I wanted to tell you, He's a God that delivers. Amen. 
When the three Hebrew children stood for God and, fa and, and failed to bow down at the sound of the music, they cranked up the heat seven times hotter in that old fiery furnace and bound them and threw three men in, the Hebrew children, and yet there was four of them in there, and one was like the Son of God, and He delivered them out of the fiery furnace, and they never even smelled like smoke. Right. I won't preach right there. <laughs> but I could. <laughs> Amen. Right. He's a God that delivers. How many of you remember when in the scripture where there was a city by the name of Nineveh was wicked before God and God said, I'm going to destroy them. But God always sends warning, right? So there's a little character by the name of Jonah and how God called him. He, he, oh, I don't want nothing to do with those Ninevites. So rather than going where God he, he went down to Joppa and got aboard a, a ship and he started the whole way away from God. Listen, you can think you're going to get away from God, but you'll never get away right. from God. God's got a job for you. Amen? Right. You know the story, how the storm came and God had rested with a storm and prepared this great big fish to come and swallow Jonah. You say, well, preacher, do you believe that? I sure do. Well, how in the world could, there's quails big enough to swallow men anyway. But if the Bible had it said Jonah swallowed the whale, I would have believed that too. <laughs> okay? So I want to just show you one verse of Scripture. We're talking about delivery now. And you know when, the, when they deliver the freight to you, they, they deliver the freight to you, it's called the... Uh, the big ships come in and it's, it's freight on board. Okay? Uh, in Jonah chapter 2, I want to show you a little demonstration here in verse 10 of God's FOB delivery. Alright? Take a moment to look. <laughs> and the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. That was the first FOB delivery was made by God. And that's not freight on board, that's free on bank. <laughs> that's better than seagrass being wrapped around your head yep. in a whale's belly. That's and there's nothing stinkier, I don't know, on the face of the planet. And how it could be such a great, a great meal. And it is. Fish don't smell good. Nope. Amen. But if you can even remember that. But I want you to know that God had a plan. The gospel was going to get to Nineveh. And it did. And that whale got sick. Boy, I'll tell you what. There could be a lot of backslidden Christians make Jesus sick. Amen? You try to run from His will and hide from Him. You can't get away. You can't hide. And where are you going to go to hide? David said, if I go down to hell, you're there. And by the way, those that die lost with God, they'll have that memory of every sermon they've ever heard right. forever ringing in their ears. Amen. Forever. Their memory will never die in the regions of the dead. Forever. Separated from God. So, in this three-point message from verse 8, the very first thing is, Thou hast delivered my soul from death. Right. Number one, thank God for that. Amen. When He delivers your soul from death, guess, guess what? You're now His child. You don't ever have to worry about being dead. You will live forever right. under eternal life. Amen. People that die without Jesus live forever also. But it's a sense of eternal death. Yes. And everything in hell is opposite of heaven. Right. Exactly opposite. And so we need to understand 
that word, the, the word of God is talking here about a great relationship to God. And I'm just let me uh, give you this relationship thing for a moment. It's not just enough just to believe in God, to know about God, and to have a, a head knowledge. You need to have a real personal experience, born again experience with Jesus Christ. Right. It's not about your head knowledge. It's not about your choices of religion or your choices of lifestyle or your choices of anything. You have to know Jesus Christ. He must rule and reign within your heart. It's called a salvation experience, a personal relationship with Him. And I'm going to come back to that. Uh, you've delivered my soul from death for a moment. But when you're delivered from death, let's just read uh, down a little bit closer, if we will, please. Down in verse 9. Because you've delivered my soul from death. You've de delivered my eyes from tears. You've delivered my feet from falling. And so now, look at this. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Right. Believe, therefore, that I have spoken. I was greatly affl afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. When shall I render unto the Lord for all the benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto God now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Right. O Lord, truly, I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. Now in the presence of all the people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Man. It's a personal <coughs> relationship from you to Christ Jesus. You're saved. Some of you who are saved, or most of you who are saved, will remember how many remember the day you were saved? Did something happen? <laughs> Amen. Something happened. Whether you realized it or not, by your faith when Jesus came in, something happened because you were you were just born. That's you were just born. You know, so a newborn baby. You know, it, it may not know a lot about the things going on around it, but it knows. When it's hungry, amen, it knows to be at birth, have a rude awakening by a doctor's hand smacking the lower end of your posterior. <laughs> Brings a cry. Amen? A baby's born. How can you be alive and not know it? I thought I saw a few of those people. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it when you're alive. Yeah. How many say I have Jesus alive in my life? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I've got him alive in my heart. Yeah. And when you're dead, asleep in the bed, he's still alive with you. Yeah. Aren't you glad for that? glory? Yeah. Keeps away the goblins. Yeah. Keeps the vampires away you don't need. Them. You don't even need. <laughs> he watches over you when you're sleeping. The peace of God that passes all understanding comes to God's believers. Amen. Because of that awesome fear and that feeling of abandonment, loneliness, separation, a disconnection. An emptiness on the inside that you can't explain. There's just something missing in my heart. It's God. Right. Because when He feels it, you feel it and you know it. 
He's always there. That heavy conviction. Let's go back to verse 1 for a few moments. I love the Lord because He hath heard my voice and my supplication. And listen, when you know you're a lost, hell-bound sinner and you come to the grips with the fact that there's nothing you can do to save your soul and you know the Bible has already put the, the, the curse of sin and death and hell already over your life and you hang in danger and jeopardy of losing your soul every moment you're outside of the ark of safety. You're gambling and you're walking away from God and you're trying to feel that emptiness and that longing and that, and that unsatisfied life and you can't find the answer. And you never will. People try to, to try everything in the world. Well, when, when every element of fun and games and, and drugs and alcohol and, and thrills and, and uh, uh, fame or fortune or whatever it is they see trying to fulfill the, the inside emptiness of their life. Listen, there's people that has everything this world has to offer and they take their life and go out of this world right. every single day and probably Someone's dying by an overdose. Yep. The flesh doesn't deliver. No. Drugs and alcohol will only compound it and keep you in shackles. Things will never be better. They'll always be worse. Right. The fear and the devastation and you feel like you're disconnected. If you're in a Christian family and you're not saved, you're not even going, to, even going to feel connected to your family. I don't have anything in common. Well, you, that's because some of them have Jesus and you don't. Yep. Yeah. You can't afford to go without Jesus one moment. Amen. You can't afford to shun so great a salvation. And all of the blessings that God has already paid for, bought and purchased, and handed them out for the asking. I can't fathom. If I could hold up some keys and say, I got anyone gets us keys to a $20 million home, come get them, they're yours. You said that you don't come. You'll never achieve it. Right. God holds on a mansion in heaven. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> For the yes. Amen. You don't even need keys up there because there's going to be no locks on my mansion right. door. <laughs> I wouldn't have to worry about thieves anymore. There'll be no thieves yep. in heaven. Right. There'll be nobody to deceive you and to dupe you. And the world will try to deceive you and feed you a bunch of lies. Right. And by the old lust of our flesh and bad choices, we give in to, in, into lies and deceits because it's easier to believe that. And let me tell you something. You need to turn it over by trust to God because no, no matter truth is going to come out in the end always. And God is truth. And this book is truth. Right. God is obligated to keep the promises of this book. And when He promises death and hell and eternal separation from God forever and from all of your loved ones who are saved, God, that you see, man said to me, he said one time, Pre well, preacher, d don't try to threaten me with hell. I said, hell's not a threat. Right. It's a promise. Because God said, that you, except you repent, you're going to perish. There are no exceptions to God's rules. This book is in, an eternal book. Right. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. From all the past, the present, and all the future. And they may try to stamp it out and change the writing. But well, the word of God will always be here. Amen. Right. It's God's book. So, Lord, hear my supplications. You've inclined your ear to me, O oh God. I called upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell gave hope on 
upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord, O uh, the Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. And guess what? God delivered his soul. Amen. Right. God delivers. Man. Special delivery from the creator of heaven and earth Man. to you. And you can write your name right there because I got news. Your name is whosoever. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And God didn't leave you out. Aren't you glad? Sometimes you could try to leave him out, but that conviction and those pangs of hell and those fears of, uh, of perishing lost without God and that uncertainty. How can you walk in uncertainty and have any peace of mind? Any peace of heart? If I don't, as long as I don't think about it, preacher, that's the worst thing in the world because death can come and you've never been thinking about it. Right. Then, once it's time that that eternal mind that no, had no more opportunities realize what you turned down and what you walked away from was the very thing in all of your life you needed the worst. Right. For all eternity. No more opportunities. God cannot any longer deliver your soul <coughs> if you die lost without God. Right. Because His Word is very clear about that. Amen. I love the Lord and I can say, Return unto thy rest, O my soul. For you can have rest for your soul. Rest for the weary. Man. Rest for your body. Rest for your mental condition of your mind. Peace that passes all understanding. The love of God manifesting itself in you. That's what it's all about. Also, I can say soul rest. I rest my soul in the presence of the Lord. And if I can rest my soul into His keeping, I can rest my life into His hands to guide me. Right. Yeah. Because guess what? This next thing that has delivered mine eyes from tears. Because as a Christian, not to walk with God and not to obey Him is going to bring sorrow and shame and heartache. And tears. A tear is going to come to all of us. We know that. Okay? People cry at funerals. They cry at weddings. And sometimes they cry tears of joy. Sometimes <coughs> tears of sorrow. And most of our tears of sorrow we bring on ourselves because we've made some bum decisions in our life. And we walk, walk, walk went wrong courses. And we wouldn't listen to good counsel. We would not take the reproof of God and the counsel of God. We walk without fear. And listen, anyone with any sense that you're going to survive in life, you better have some fear of some things. Amen? Because fear will bring you to decisions that will make you safer. Amen. Right. You know... I don't know about people that jump out of airplanes. <laughs> Amen. Even with parachutes. Amen. That's been the greatest fear for me for the rapture. Lord, if God don't change me instantly before I go up, I'll be dead forever. <laughs> I, I'm glad for that scripture. Amen. Amen. We shall all, all be checked and be, be sleeping or dead. But we all shall be changed. Right. Come back. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I think I can take it that long. Amen? Amen. <laughs> when that change comes, we'll go on. Another nightmare for me is I read in Revelation 19 where we're to come back on white horses. And I, I don't like horses. <laughs> 
I got bit in the top of the head of the horse. <laughs> I got thrown off on a chipped elbow. The only broken bone I've ever had is came from a plaguing horse. <laughs> so we got to do something about them white horses, amen? Maybe they got saddles that strap your legs in <laughs> so you can't get off or be bucked or thrown. It's just funny how they know. This horse didn't want me to ride. So I'm going to show you. Oh, I got on that thing. They warned me. Right. <laughs> we took off. Went too bad. I got way away from the barn. And then when all of a sudden he turned his head, this beautiful Palomino horse. And it was no longer a walk. <laughs> Full lies. And when he got right by the barn, he went. <laughs> he just ducked down and off I went. I remember when I hollered, oh God. <laughs> Go back there, oh God, moments. And the next words will get me to the hospital. <laughs> God's going to have to do something about the horses. <laughs> It's not worth dying and taking a chance for anything right. to go to hell. Right. Yeah. Lord, you've delivered my soul from death. You've right. delivered my eyes from tears. And how many times have you cried in repentance to God and He forgave how you messed your life up? Amen. And all of a sudden He dried those tears up and He's delivered you to give you some peace of mind as a Christian. Right. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm sorry I dropped out on you for a long time. God, God I failed you in ways I should have never. In my, in my Bible knowledge, I should have never failed you. I should have never walked away. I should have never left your presence. I should have never left your Bible under the coffee table with death dust gathering on it. Right. Lord, I, I should have see how little we've done for God and how much He's done for us and how much we failed. There'll be tears in every eye. That's right. Every eye. That's why after that judgment and after the rewards and after all of that, God will be just, I don't know if He'll use His hands or kiss the tears away. But he'll be wiping the tears away That's right. from every eye when we stand before a holy God. He's already delivered your tears yeah. from your eyes. That's right. And my feet from falling. Boy, it's a wonderful thing to know that God's given you victory to live the right kind of a life. I'll never forget when I pastored in Charleston, West Virginia. There's a little lady there brought her boyfriend. His name was Chris to the service, and Chris got saved. Boy, he, he was crying when he left that altar. He was rejoicing because he was a he was a wayward, a wayward boy. And a, 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 he's the first one saved in his family. And I, I'll never forget, he said, I've got I love my dad. I've got to I've got to get go, I've got to get my dad to church. And the next week he brought Chris brought his dad Benny to church. Little mm -hmm. tiny, little tiny sweet fellow. He got under conviction and Denny come down crying and Chris brought him down the aisle that Sunday. He knelt here and trusted Jesus and he didn't want to leave. He just stood down there and he was crying. I said, Denny, did the Lord save me? Yeah, he saved me. Why are you so emotional? He said, 
preacher, I don't want to walk out of this place. I said, you, you, you can't stay in church. <laughs> the lights are, well, why, why do you feel that way? And he said, I'm afraid when I go out that I'll fail the Lord and I'll go back. I said, God's giving you promises. Right. He'll keep you from falling. Amen. We prayed. And then he walked out and he did not retreat back to the old wife. Amen. Amen. He brought his wife the next week and she was saved. They brought their daughters and they had several boys lived down in Georgia. They brought them there. And over the next <coughs> few months, I think there was about 19 or 20 people in his family that were saved in our services. Uh, God moved my ministry from there back up to Michigan. I was up here, I think, maybe three or four or five years, and Judy and I went back to Charleston to visit. Went into a little favorite uh, drugstore that had all kind of nice things in it. We loved to shop there, that drugstore. And I went into that drugstore and we shopped around, had a a little day or two of vacation and uh, Judy was still shopping and I said I, I'm going to go in, out to the car come when you can I went back out to the car and as I was and as I was walking to the car I saw this little little short figure bent over and it caught my eye and it was Denny I said, Denny, oh, preach. He locked his arm around my neck. The, you know what the first words were not hello? He said, oh, preach. I would still be going to hell if it weren't for you. And I got a hug. Wow. Man. I want to tell you the people that you lead to the Lord Jesus, yeah. you'll be the greatest hero they were right. known. All of his family are saved. <laughs> you delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. How can you be the God like that that delivers? I just want to, don't have time to do a expository on this, but read it for yourself. Some of these things I read from verse 9 down. And I will pay my vows to the Lord. But look at verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Amen. And I love verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all His benefits toward me? That's right. Why? You didn't know that God, you, you, most employers have a benefit package. I mean, like insurance. Amen. I'll match your 401k. Okay? How many of you like vacation pay? Well, glory. Benefits. <laughs> Amen? If you want a job, you need a job with benefits. Thank God not only comes down and saves your soul, sets your feet upon the solid path, Right. protects you, provides for you every need you have, and He has a benefit program. So it's a preacher, when are you going to retire? <laughs> I've retired several times. Right. Bell Tire is a good place to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you will get that when you wake up. <laughs> Do you know he's got a retirement program that's out of this world? That's right. right. Hey, there's no place to quit on God. Right. Your ministries may change, but according to your health or whatever it may be. But I've got to lose you. God's got a great retirement program. Man. He's got benefits you'll never know. He can keep you safe. He can make you laugh in the middle of your sleep. Yeah. He can keep you happy. 
He can keep you blessed. No. He can make you prosperous. He can make you a blessing and productive for His glory. He can make you a great soul winner. He can make you a singer. Wave at me, Hannah. When Hannah first started to sing, I said, she'll never make it. <laughs> she could not even stay on a pitch. She had a desire to sing. I said, well, I'll pray for her. <laughs> I think one of the most beautiful, powerful voices in the on the face of the planet is sitting right here. Right. Amen. I'm going to tell you, if you ever desire to do something, God can make you miraculous. He can fill your cup. I think He already has. Amen? Fill my cup, Lord. I'll just lift it up, Lord. Some people don't want their cup filled. Listen, take what God fills you with today and take it out in the streets and give it away and come back next Sunday with an empty cup. Yeah. Right. Some of you come in here so full year, there's no room for God to do anything. <laughs> Amen? Yep. If you're resting on last week's blessings or years past blessings from God, you're resting on something that's past and gone. Right. <laughs> you need now. Blessings now. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. To now. It's the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Amen. Now God is here. Now God is calling. So let's stand. They're going to get ready for the baptism. All our invitations going on. So come on, those of you who will be baptized. The men's dressing room is over here. I'm going to have a word of prayer that we'll start giving the invitation.